Welcome to Gizof X once again. Um, I believe uh, you have enjoyed the first session of data science, which we have introduced, um, and uh, you have also enjoyed the some of the facts, which uh, I think my colleague Abhishek has mentioned uh, about adjusted R square. So that was our first session. If you guys really like our, um, you know, training, please like and subscribe our channel, and uh, you know also press that bell notification. Uh, so that you know whenever we'll post the new videos about gizmo facts and you know technology you guys can uh, you know able to receive those um anyways so again uh, today we are coming with another interesting topic of data science and uh, this will be taken by uh, abhishek once again so i'm not going to waste further time over to you abhishek Welcome everyone to Gizmo Facts. We at Gizmo Facts aim at providing data science tutorials and coaching all over the world and also data science live project assistance to the industry. In today's session, we will look at a very important topic of data science, which often arises in data science interview questions so if you are looking for a career switch to data science this video is very important for you in this video we are going to focus on the assumptions of linear regression what are the nitty gritties of the assumptions which assumption is the most important and which assumption is lesser in terms of importance hi I'm Obhishek Rai. I have done my statistics from the Indian Statistical Institute and currently pursuing an executive PhD from XLRI. I have been working for the last six, seven years in both academia and industry as a data scientist. So let's begin today's session. The most important assumptions of linear regression are the following. First of all, linearity. I will come one by one to the assumptions. First, let me jot them down. Secondly, no heteroscedasticity. Number three, no autocorrelation. Number four, no multicollinearity. And number five, multivariate normality of the errors. Now, according to me, the most important assumption is number one, linearity, because we are modeling the mean of the dependent variable as a linear function of the independent variable. So if the scatter plot of the independent and dependent variable looks like or even resembles that of a straight line, then only we can model that data with the help of a linear regression model. It need not be exactly a straight line because that is never the case, but it must have a linear structure. The question may arise what happens if there are multiple regressors? In that case, the scatter plot of each linear regressor with the dependent variable y must be close to that of a straight line. So the linearity assumption 
is most important and that information is also captured in the name linear regression analysis. The word linear is sitting just in front of the words regression and analysis. Now, after that, no heteroscedasticity and no autocorrelation. In terms of import, importance, according to me, these come right after linearity because in case of heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation alike, the unbiasedness of the estimator is hampered. So what is heteroscedasticity? Heteroscedasticity means that the variances of the error terms are not constant. What does autocorrelation mean? Autocorrelation means that the serial errors are correlated with one another. If we just go to a basic linear regression model with say two independent regressors, it will look like this one where i ranges from 1 to n. Now, if the variances of these epsilon i's are not constant for all i's, then we have heteroscedasticity. And if epsilon i's are correlated amongst one another, then the third assumption of linear regression model is violated. And in both these cases, the estimator of the unknowns, which means, say we are estimating beta 1 by beta 1 cap, this estimator will not be unbiased for beta 1. So expectation beta 1 cap won't be equal to beta 1 if there is heteroscedasticity or autocorrelation present in the data. Now, if there is multicollinearity, the fourth condition, what does multicollinearity mean? Multicollinearity means that the regressors are themselves correlated amongst one another. Okay. So, in case of multicollinearity, the unbiasedness of the estimators will prevail. So, in case of autocorrelation not being present or heteroscedasticity, this was the case. But in case of no multicollinearity, we will have E beta 1 cap to be equal to beta 1. So the unbiasedness won't be hampered. So you may ask me that what's then the problem with multicollinearity. There are some other problems. The estimator won't be efficient. That means the variance of the estimator won't approach the lowest possible value, which is called the Kramer lower bound. It won't approach that. That's why multicollinearity is also a problem, but it's a problem lesser in magnitude than heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. And of course, linearity. Now, I have deliberately mentioned the last point, multivariate normality of errors as the last point or the, or the item, last item in the list. Why? Because first of all, keep in mind that the errors of the residuals need to be multivariate normal. The observations themselves may or may not be normal. Those who practice data science, those who fit regression models, they know this. In many cases, the data itself is not normal. Mark my words. But you can fit a linear regression model. You have to fit the model, then check the residual distribution. If the histogram looks like that of a normal, that is, it has a bell-shaped structure, the histogram, then the fifth point is, addressed. So, the fifth point, to check whether the fifth point is addressed or not, we have to actually first fit the linear regression model and then decide. That's why, according to me, this is a little bit less important than the other assumptions. So, in data science questions, data science interviews, questions may come, what are the assumptions? 
which assumptions you think are the most important or grade the assumptions according to importance and why you think it this is like this what you say and further subtle questions like normality is needed for the residuals not always for the actual data concern so this is a little bit deviation from the traditional textbook knowledge but this is i tell from my experience as a data scientist so stay tuned for more such useful videos you can click the link below subscribe to our channel and meet you again in the next video thank you Thank you.